Guten Morgen, Heidelberg. Herzlich willkommen. Thanks to all of you for coming for DjangoCon Europe 2018, which is the 10th DjangoCon Europe. As usual, we have to start off with a bit of housekeeping. And uh, yeah, we get through this rather quickly and then get the conference running. There are a couple of organizers on site. Feel free to talk to us every time, whenever you need something and you can't figure out um, how to do or how to get something. We are here to help. Also, if you have any questions, talk to anybody with a blue lanyard. These, um, they should be either know what they are talking about or know whom to talk to to tell, the, to tell you um, how to fix the problem or whatever you're facing. We got a wardrobe. So the weather is warm, or at least supposed to be for this week. It's supposed to rain occasionally as well, though. So when you get in in the morning or go out for a break and come back, you'll have a wet coat. There's a wardrobe at the begin, um, entrance, main entrance, except for going up the stairs to the reception, go down the side stairs, there's a wardrobe, put your wet wardrobe there, please. Wet coats, wet jackets. It's staffed all day by the venue, so it should be fairly safe, but we as organizers can't take responsibility for that. And then there's stuff like coffee, lunch, sponsors, which is over there, through those doors over there. There is a smoking area also through there, but then go outside. And if possible, please do not stand right in the entrances, but take a few steps to the side so people can go through the entrances without running through the smoke. There's a help desk at reception, in the, the middle one probably. And there's toilets like all over the place. We have gendered and all gendered bathrooms. Use the ones you're comfortable with and the people who now are in there, they know they are at the right one. So that's not up for discussion. So um, we have a code of conduct. You know this, and you all agree to it, because otherwise you can't register for a ticket. And our code of conduct is here to make sure everyone, to try as possible, feels safe, feels welcome, feels included at this conference. Um, it means that we take every report seriously. We have a documented process. It's public on our website of how we deal with the report. Uh, and basically, when something happens, we can, it can range anywhere from taking no action if it's not a violation. Most common is that we talk to someone and we demand that they stop certain behavior. Uh, but in more severe cases, we will also not hesitate to remove someone from the conference immediately, cancel a talk, or things like that. These are not common issues. But they are, they are common decisions, but they are options that are open if necessary. Um, if you have any concerns, then we have a code of conduct team. These four people, we have an email address which is only read by these four. You can approach any of us in person. If you aren't sure whether something that happened to you or something that you saw is an issue under the code of conduct or whether the code of conduct applies to that space, then feel free to just talk to us. Like, we don't look badly on people who report something, and then we find it's not a violation. Um, also, if you've reported something and something else happens, you can report as many times as you want if you feel that is necessary. Um, we have a phone number also. That is a phone number for code of conduct issues, so please don't phone to ask what the weather will be today and whether you need to bring a jacket, because you will wake someone up. Um, we also have a photo policy. Uh, so if you wear a black lanyard, you're saying photos are OK. Uh, if you take like very obvious pictures of someone, it's still good to ask for permission. White lanyard means no photos. Uh, if you've changed your mind, you can all now figure out that you're wearing the wrong one. You can always come to the desk and uh, change one for another one. Um, we have a quiet room. It's basically right upstairs here. So you take the stairs over there. And that is a room for people who need a bit of quiet space. There are some seats there, some desks there. You're allowed to work there. Uh, but most importantly, keep it quiet. Make space for people who need a bit of distance from the conference and from the busyness of it all. 
We also have a few niceties. If you've been in the bathrooms, we have bathroom baskets there with all sorts of toiletries. Um, they are sponsored by AX Semantics. We also have painkillers and other drugs like that at registration. Uh, so feel free to take anything from the bathroom boxes that you need. Don't take all of it. It's for sharing with other people. And we also have pronoun buttons at the registration desk. You may have seen them when you came in. So feel free to take more than one. Uh, feel free to change them. And you can use them to help people get to know you a little better. And lastly, we have the speech to text sponsored by Divio. And there are a few seats in the front here um, that are reserved for people that need to sit close to be able to read the text. Because if you're all the way in the back, it's a bit tricky. So please make those seats available if needed to people who need to see the text up close. Um, we have a conference hashtag. It's DjangoCon. We're on Twitter as DjangoCon Europe. Our official emoji is the European castle, because as you may have seen, Jang uh, this city has a castle. Uh, I've not actually been there, but I hear it's very nice. Um, we have a Slack channel. If you haven't gotten an invite yet to our Slack channel, then check your email, because we sent them about a, two weeks ago. Uh, ask around. You can ask us for the link also, and we'll, we'll invite you. Of course, at the Slack channel, the code of conduct also applies, as it does basically to, to all our events. Uh, you might especially want to join the social channel and the announcements channel. Um, and also, uh, we like to be an open community. There are a lot of people here. Who's actually here for the first time? First DjangoCon ever. Wow, that's a lot. So we encourage you to get to know people, get to know new people. Uh, and so we have two specific rules that we like to suggest to you. They're more like guidelines than rules. Uh, so one is the Pac-Man rule. If you stand with people in a circle in the coffee room or something, then leave some space for other people to join instead of forming an entirely closed circle. In other words, stand like a Pac-Man. And also uh, the community plus bus rule, which says, uh, for every year that you've been to DjangoCon, try to meet that many people, new people, every day. So this is my ninth DjangoCon Europe, so I should try to meet nine people a day, new people. If this is your first, you only have to meet one person. Um, they're more like guidelines, not actual rules, uh, but we hope these kind of things encourage you to meet new people and become part of the community. As you might have seen, we've got Wi-Fi at the venue. Um, the SSID is DjangoCon Europe, and the password is pip install Django. We've also put that up on posters, both in the entrance area and in the break room. Um, keep in mind that this building is over 110 years old, and it wasn't built for Wi-Fi and internet connection. So our network team um, spent 11 hours yesterday setting up the network to be as good as possible, but um, there's a limit to what we can do in this building. So please be gentle, disable your automatic updates, and um, be responsible in what you use the network for. To the schedule, we have talks right here on that stage for all today, tomorrow, and Friday. On every of those days, we will have two coffee breaks, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one lunch break. The breaks will take place to your left. You can find the exact times and the programs you all got at the registration, or you can still get a printed program there. We will have lightning talks in the last slot on every of those three days. If you haven't heard what lightning talks are before, lightning talks are talks that can take up to five minutes. So we want to have a series of very short talks from a very wide range of community members. Um, we will have buckets at re the registration desk set up very soon where you can put in an index card with your name and the topic until the end of the lunch break of the respective day. We will then, until the start of the afternoon break, um, select uh, a few of those talks to, for, for that slot. We will have separate buckets for people who have never spoken at a major conference before and a bucket for everyone else. So we try to make a balance and make it easier to get in for new people. We expect that there will be more submissions so then we can issue slots say, if, you, if you're not selected for that day, please feel free to put it in on the next day. Again, it's not a valuation um, and not a value judgment of your talk. It's just that we need to, need to balance um, it some way. 
uh, feel also free to submit multiple talks if you want. And we will hang the list of the selected talks near the registration desk for the afternoon break. On Saturday and Sunday, we will have sprints and workshops at Dezernat 16, which is close to the central station. If you've never been at a sprint before, it's basically all of us gathering in a room to spend some time contributing to open source and community projects. It's a great way to get started, even if you have never contributed to an open source project before, because there's lots of people in the room eager to help you. We will have a detailed intro into how that works on Friday and how to contribute to open source projects and Django in specific. So I'm going to leave that for now. And we'll also have a number of workshops that you can find in the printed program on Friday. Those workshops will have limited space, um, but we will have no pre-registration. So please just show up in time for them and we will just let as many people in as the room fits. Tomorrow night, we will have the birthday party for the 10th DjangoCon Europe. It will be at Halle 02, which is also pretty close to the central station, and we will have more details on the party and the introduction tomorrow. On Friday morning, we are planning to offer a morning run with a guide. Um, the meeting time and place for that would be 8 a.m. at the main entrance. Can we do a sh quick show of hands who would be theoretically interested in joining that? Okay, now you do realize that's the morning after the party? <laughs> okay. Also, inspired by what the 2015 edition of DjangoCon Europe in Cardiff did, they had a, a program with psychological coaches on there who, could, who, who you could schedule a session with. We want to tackle a different topic that is a problem in our community. Mental health is still a very important issue in our community that we need to talk about a lot. But what's also important is physical health. Humans are not built for sitting at a desk all day. And we'll have a trainer on site on Friday who will show exercises to get a better and healthier posture and stuff like that on Friday. So we will announce more details on that on Friday as well. Um, during registration for your ticket, we asked you if you have any allergies or things you can't eat. And if you filled that in at least two weeks before today, we've got you covered. There will be something to eat for you. Everything should be labeled. There will also be a sign with all the allergens in the different um, in the different food. If you're not sure, just ask us or one of the cooks behind the, uh, the buffet. They they know it all. Um, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Um, just a few announcements about behavior during the talks. I think that's all very much common sense and I just want to mention it in case. Of course, we'd like to ask you to be relatively quiet during a talk. It's just respectful for the speaker and also our talks are going to be fascinating and amazing and really, really cool. So you just want to listen. But it just can happen that you want to leave the room because maybe you just want to take a quick breath of uh, air or you want to join the quiet room upstairs there because you need a moment for yourself or you want to talk to somebody, all of that is perfectly fine. Uh, we'd like to ask you to use the back doors which will be open on both sides during talks and try to be quiet. They are old doors and it's not quite easy but if you're careful it will be all right. Also some speakers choose to take questions at the end of their talk. Not all of them do, but if speakers do take questions, we will have microphones for you to use, um, at least in the middle of uh, the room and probably at the sides. And we'd like to ask you to actually ask questions. I know it's very, very tempting if a speaker talks about something you have a strong opinion on to go up there and voice that opinion, but the time and place for comments is elsewhere. We offer, for example, a talks channel where you can start a civilized discussion of the issues, but please leave the space of the open questions for actual questions. Thank you. Also, I'd like to ask you uh, for the same reason of, of respect uh, towards the speaker and not annoying all the people around you to put your phones on quiet. So 
if you have the Slack app and your phone just got boop or beep or vrrrt, then uh, please check your Slack notification settings or your phone notification settings. We have a live video streaming available of all the talks at streaming.media.ccc.de. We also will have recordings live a few days after the respective talk at most. We have to thank the Video Operation Center, the VOC, of the Chaos Computer Club, a German volunteer organization for that. They're here and they're available for us and many other open source conferences and they're amazing. They build their own cases for recording hardware and they do also good things with open source software around the whole recording and streaming theme and we thank them very much. Ah, also, we had a few changes to the program. We were able to contain those changes uh, to day one. So we'd like to ask you to uh, check the online program for today and not trust the printed program too much. A few talks have been shuffled around. So the break times are still on. Nothing major has changed. We had to cancel, sadly, two talks due to personal reasons and also a visa issue that is very, very sad. And uh, we have adjusted by moving some talks and also adding lightning talks in the end of today. Right. That's about it. Let's talk about our sponsors. First of all, we'd like to thank all of our sponsors, most of all our platinum sponsor, GoDaddy. Sponsorship is a very hard issue among conferences. We managed to find one platinum sponsor and a lot of gold sponsors. You can meet all of them if you head through there once you get your food or your drinks. They have booths there and they're eager to meet you and we hope you like to meet them as well. And they've been amazing to us and extremely helpful. Uh, we would like to extend special thanks to DVO for helping us provide the live speech-to-text captioning that you can see on the screens to the side of the stage because it makes the conference much more accessible to many groups of people, not only people who can't hear or who can't hear well, but also, for example, people who aren't too fluent in English, both speakers and, and attendees. Uh, it makes the conference much more understandable and accessible to them. Thank you. We have many other sponsors and as an open source conference, we rely on them heavily. It would be very hard to make the conference work without them and it would be nearly impossible to make it accessible, both due to services like the speech-to-text captioning, but also because the tickets would be very expensive and expensive to a degree that most people active in open source community who aren't actively employed within that community can't make we have been able to offer tickets for individual students for below 200 euros, which is the best we could do, and we're pretty proud of that. And without our amazing sponsors, we would have been forced to go above 400 euros instead. So we're really, really thankful there. Um, we also wouldn't have been able to offer our Opportunity Grants program without them. We had several sponsors, both from the open source community and past conferences or other conferences, um, help us out with Opportunity Grant sponsoring, which allowed us to uh, offer financial assistance to people who are underrepresented in the whole tech area and the Django community and also to people who just plain could not afford to travel to a conference and attend a conference like this. Thank you all. <laughs> now, next up, I'd like to uh, actually proceed to our first talk. Um, we have a keynote speaker, Emma Gordon, who will now present to you her talk.